Ohio State University College of Optometry, class of 2018. I'm Carla Zadnick, Dean of the College, and this class of 2018 is special to me in many ways. Um, I actually realized this morning they're the first class that I've gotten to, got to both welcome as Dean and graduate as Dean, so they're very special to me. And another is they were the first class to experience our Socialize program. In that program, a cohort of eight to 10 students were randomly assigned to a volunteer faculty member and the faculty member then planned regular activities for his or her group throughout the first year. Parents, families, you may have heard about some of the activities. They included dinners, pumpkin carving, egg decorating, zip lining, escape rooms, hiking adventures, and trampolining, among others. Students got to know that one faculty member well and also spent time with classmates they might not usually have sought out. I think the Socialized program is partially responsible for the extraordinary connectedness of this group of young people. The other contributing factor, they are a wonderful group of people who came here and formed friendships that will last them the rest of their lives. At Ohio, at Ohio State Optometry, we are focused on optometric education and vision research. Focused, get it. Um, the mission of the college states that we educate excellent optometrists who reflect our diverse communities. In this, our 104th year, the beginning of our second century of educating the optometrists who will provide eye care and save the, visions, the vision of Ohioans, Americans, and the world's citizens, I am struck by the talent, dedication, and accomplishments of the women and men seated before me. This represents the culmination of four years of study enriching patient encounters and countless social media postings, all of which have prepared them for their bright future. Let me welcome a few luminary guests that we have in the audience, and if you would please uh, stand and we'll applaud each group as we do so. Our special guests include representatives from the Ohio State University Optometry Alumni Society, President Dr. Vince Driggs, and board members Drs. Bob Newcomb and Jeff Myers. We have representation from the Ohio Optometric Association, the statewide organization that ensures these students' future and their patients' access to them as eye care providers. The college has a very close relationship with the association, and that relationship is the envy of most other states. Join me in acknowledging President-elect Dr. Mike Early, trustees Drs. Lind Lindsay Florkey and Tim Fries, and Executive Director Keith Kearns. Also joining me here on the stage are the college's academic leaders, Associate Dean of Academic Affairs, Dr. Mike Early, Associate Dean for Clinical Services, Dr. Greg Nixon, and Associate Dean for Research, Dr. Jeff Walleen. We are all ably assisted every day by the staff of the college who are in attendance. Um, and I usually, I usually ask the staff to stand and then I realized they're all back there working. So this year, could you please just give them a round of applause on my behalf? <laughs> and vital to the lifeblood of the college, the people responsible for these students' education and the acquisition and dissemination of new knowledge in optometry and vision science are the faculty of the Ohio State University College of Optometry. If you count yourself as a faculty member, would you all please stand? And with the faculty on stage, we have um, special recognition for our emeritus faculty, Drs. Bob Newcomb and Mike Pulaski. And last but definitely not least, I take great personal pleasure in introducing you to the smart, engaged, engaging, energetic Ohio State Optometry graduating class of 2018.
A little bit more about them to come, you'll be hearing more, but know that they are about to become our valued colleagues. We will work with them, we will see them at homecomings and sporting events here on campus and optometric conferences for years to come. I would venture to say some of us may eventually work for some of them. They represent our legacy and the future of the profession of optometry. They wear that responsibility well. We are proud to welcome them to the optometric profession. The graduating class and I worked together to select the convocation speaker. It's the college's chance to honor someone, but I also strive to select someone whose words can carry the class forward. Today's convocation speaker more than fills that bill. He is well known to the optometric profession. He graduated from the Ohio State University College of Optometry, having received both his optometry and master's degrees here. He then went on to serve as dean at the University of Alabama at Birmingham School of Optometry and interim provost for that entire campus. For the last 16 years, he's been the president of the venerable Illinois College of Optometry in Chicago, a position he retires from this summer. Um, if you were seeing him at the ICO graduation, he wears a, what, what is it, a medal. I guess you call it a medal. It looks really like a dinner plate. And um, I asked him when he was changing into his regalia, where the, I was looking forward to seeing the medal. And he said, um, it's too valuable and ICO security won't let him transport it. So Stu, if you ever wanted to see the medal, you have to go to attend his graduation ceremony. Um, Emeritus Dean Dr. Dick Hill and his wife Lee were unable to join us today. Um, Dr. Hill is fine, but they, they just weren't able to be here today. But they asked that I convey their regrets to Errol and emphasize how proud um, Dr. Hill is to have him at this podium. He recalls that Errol's master's thesis was a landmark achievement in those early challenging days of optometry before the full scope of licensure that we enjoy today as practitioners. Errol's thesis was about topical anesthetics and was published in the medical literature in Archives of Ophthalmology in 1972, which was no small task back then. Please welcome optometry's very best, Dr. Errol Augsburger. Thank you uh, so much, uh, Dr. Zadnik. It is indeed a pleasure for me to be here at this convocation. Um, I have fond memories of my time at Ohio State, and I want to talk a little bit about those as we go through here. Uh, as Dean uh, Zadnik had indicated through her introduction, uh, I did leave uh, OSU after almost 25 years for other leadership positions at the University of Alabama at Birmingham, and also at the Illinois College of Optometry, where. I am uh, president now, but as she also mentioned, only two more months. Not that anybody's counting. <laughs> uh, you graduates today, uh, many of you are barely 25 years old, uh, and uh, those 25 years seems like a long time, your next 25, but I can tell you it's going to go extremely well. So uh, enjoy and appreciate your next journey into the practice of your pr chosen profession. Well, I certainly enjoyed and appreciated the 25 years uh, I had at the Illinois College of Optometry and at the University of Alabama at Birmingham. Uh, I still have fond memories of Ohio State. When I arrived on campus in 1967, Dr. Glenn Fry, uh, whose portrait hangs in your, your college, had just stepped down uh, from the position as director of the optometry program. At that time, the School of Optometry was actually within the College of Arts and Sciences and it had just migrated to become the College of Optometry with the first doctoral degree program within a major university. And those class of 68 people who were graduates of that first class are here today. We're gonna to hear more about them later. The, uh, Dr. Frederick Hebbard was uh, made the first or the inaugural dean of our program here. Both uh, Fry and Hebbard were um, uh, quite different, but they were both very substantial people in the evolution of our profession and within the science and health communities of the Ohio State University. Dr. Fry is often credited uh, with being a father of evidence-based optometry and vision science. 
He was an amazing intellect who, who brought credit to the OSU programs by standing tall among uh, the best scientists in the university. He also had a human touch that uh, all that worked with him appreciated. Indeed, I remember to this day that it was Glenn Fry and Martha Fry, his wife, who were the first to visit my wife, Stephanie, sitting down here in the VIP section with me in, uh, in the hospital after the birth of our first son, Ryan, in 1971. Dr. Fred Hebert, on the other hand, was also a major factor in the health and maturation of optometry as a noble and respected health profession within the university and the academic health center. Against the major opposition to optometry success during these years as dean. You've also seen his portrait hanging on the campus because of his commitment to building enhanced facilities and the development of a curriculum which recognized optometry's place as a drug prescribing profession, in addition to being a glasses and contact lens prescribing profession. Always a frugal man, I remember writing in his 1957 Plymouth until the floorboards literally rusted out. Yet he was always understanding of the vacation time I took to travel the country with my three boys, Ryan, Kyle, and Ty, while they were growing up here and uh, I was a young faculty member here. That brings me to the third leader of the optometry program already mentioned by Dean Zadnick, Dr. Richard Hill. In addition to being a very effective dean at OSU, Dick was my graduate advisor and I'm certainly indebted to him for helping me launch my administrative career uh, by being such a terrific role model of professionalism and advocacy within the program. I was recently going through some old OSU photos of the time that I ran Dr. Hill's corneal physiology lab where my job was to evaluate the efficacy of new contact lens materials, a job I did by measuring oxygen consumption of the rabbit's cornea after they were fitted with contact lenses. We're fortunate that Dr. Hill is still very active and while disappointed we are uh, here today, he did send me a copy of that article that uh, Dean Zadnick mentioned that was published in the archives of ophthalmology many, many years ago. Then came my contemporaries and former faculty members. OSU Dean John Schessler and I were graduate students at the same time. He was then succeeded by an outstanding faculty member of mine while, while I was dean at the UAB School of Optometry, Dr. Melvin Shipp. Mel Shipp and his wife, Michelle, have retired to the Phoenix area where my wife, Stephanie, and I plan to be after my retirement at the end of uh, next month. I'm especially proud of our current dean, Carla Zadnick. She's not only a powerful voice for optometry and vision science in the university, but she's viewed as one of a handful of truly outstanding leaders in the profession. I'm also pleased to remind you that she is the only one of these distinguished leaders in the optometry program at Ohio State that I've just mentioned who also holds a degree from my institution, the Illinois College of Optometry. She was awarded an honorary degree, Doctor of Ocular Sciences, a few years ago when we recognized her many contributions to our profession and she delivered an eloquent commencement speech for ICO. Thank you, Carla. And thank you, uh, graduates, uh, for your indulgence of a brief tour down memory lane. But let's get on to your future. One of the special events of uh, events like today is that you, class of 2018, graduates, you're supported by family and friends. Nobody gets through a rigorous program like OSU's without a little help from these people. So today I thought I would share to you some of my family support sayings, which not only got me through my graduation in 1971, but have encouraged my career for these last 50 years. Let me start with my mother. I'm sure you all have remembrances of phrases of wisdoms your mother's offered. <clears throat> and I expect that there are some similarities in what they say and what my mother used to say. For example, you can either get up grumpy and disagreeable, or you can get up and start the day happy and positive. Mothers know the power of positive thinking and the importance of attitude brings, uh, <clears throat> brings to success. 
She was right, and even today her advice continues to serve me well. And it will you too as you start your, what will be your remarkable careers in optometry and life success. Another of mother's admonitions was, remember who you are. This wasn't meant to believe that you were better than others, but to respect the family that nurtured and supported you. A family who wants to continue to be proud of you, whatever you do, but also a family who fervently wants you to succeed by being a person who respects traditions and values taught to you throughout your growing up years. I expect that most of you have a version of the mother's caution which goes something like, eat your vegetables if you want dessert. Well, that might be good healthy eating advice. I believe it also uh, was meant in a more global sense. In your striving to achieve worthwhile goals like your graduation this weekend, there will inevitably be important but sometimes not pleasant steps getting to you to where you're going. It was true at the dinner table, but it's equally true for life achievement. When I was five years old, my mother took me to a live radio show. Apparently, I looked cute enough or goofy enough for the radio talk show host to interview me on the air. She asked me about chores I did around the house, and I said my brother and I helped with the housekeeping. When she asked about any special tips, I innocently replied that if there was dirt on the floor I could not clean up, my brother and I would sweep it under the rug. <laughs> Needless to say, mother was mortified. When we got home, she reminded my brother and me, don't ever sweep dirt under the rug again. It applies to life as it does to housekeeping. Do your job the right way. There are no shortcuts. I was always a very competitive kid. My brothers and I often had some usually unusually friendly, but sometimes intense differences of opinions, uh, which sometimes resulted in shouting matches or worse. Mother's approach was not to take sides, but to counsel. Take a deep breath and speak a little more kindly to your brothers. Often the clarity of the situation is greatly improved by taking a deep breath. And certainly situations are diffused by speaking a little more kindly to my brothers. It helped me then with my brothers, but it's also helped me much more during the years that I've been involved in challenging situations. In my younger years, I was in love with sports. Football, basketball, baseball, volleyball, you name it. I hated to lose and I would get emotionally drained when I infrequently wasn't on the winning team. I never got it until Grandmother Augsburger used to posit, somebody has to lose. But that she didn't mean that you should plan to lose, but each game is not the end of the world. There's another game tomorrow or the next day, and there will be opportunity to win that one, but never let a single loss get you down. Well, there you have it. Six phrases of wisdom from my mother and grandmother, which have served me well during my last 50 years of my professional career, and will serve you well too. Remember, keep a happy and positive attitude. Remember who you are. Eat your vegetables if you want dessert. Don't ever sweep dirt under the rug. Take a deep breath and speak a little more kindly to your brother. Somebody has to lose, but not every time. Now, I'm gauging out here in the audience, there are a few mothers that I've seen shaking their heads and a few of them even smiling because I expect that some of them gave some of that advice over the years. So I'm wondering if you would help me out, mothers in the audience, not just mothers of our graduates, but any mothers in the audience who have given this advice, if you would stand and let us recognize for you for your wisdom. Please stand up and let us recognize you for your wisdom. Thank you so much. We have a lot of wisdom in the room. <laughs> Best wishes to each of you new doctors. 
You've reserved, re received a superb education and clinical training here at OSU. Now go out and make this part of your life successful and meaningful. Remember to give back to your profession and to your college in these future successful years. And most importantly, remember to listen to the advice of your mother. Thank you. Thank you so much, Errol. Um, usually at this point, I would give a speaker of Errol's prominence some kind of token of recognition of his being here today, you know, a plaque or a certificate, but I have a feeling he has a wall full of such recognitions. And Stephanie, I don't know if that house in Phoenix is gonna have a wall for all that stuff. So we chose something a little different. You can stay there and open it or whatever you choose. <laughs> and Errol, what you don't know is that is not a, um, a generally available hat. That class has it, but they are rare. The faculty? No, they don't have them. Uh, as we entered our second century, we began a new graduation weekend tradition and by inviting the 50-year reunion class to each graduation weekend. This year, that is the class of 1968. Eight members of the graduating class from that year were able to join us today, and I'd ask them to stand and be recognized. We've taken to calling them our golden graduates. I don't know if they like that or not, but they seem to enjoy it. At lunch today, the camaraderie of these men was palpable. They were telling stories. There was um, a video unearthed of their graduation in Ohio Stadium that doesn't look that different, graduates, from what you'll do tomorrow. And I'd like to carry a special message from a member of this class, Dr. Mark Ager. So 50 years on from where you sit, he encourages you to stay connected and continue to make your memories as a class, as individuals, as an, and as optometrists. My hope is that those memories will carry you all forward to your 50th reunion when you might be sitting up here. So welcome the Golden Graduates. We are joining with the Optometry Alumni Society in celebrating two of our own that have been selected for special recognition. And this year is especially unique. We have two awards to Ohio State alumni that this year, fair and square, no stuffing the ballot box, um, have gone to two of our faculty members. So first, I'd like to introduce the 2018 Early Professional Achievement Award winner, and that is Dr. Nikki Lai from the class of 2003. He received both his Doctor of Optometry and his Master's of Science degree from us. He is a fellow of the American Academy of Optometry and chief of our contact lens service. He is an educator's educator. He is utterly committed to the education of our students, and I believe they rise to meet his high expectations. He leads them with a mix of competence and humor, an interesting mix of those two, that just keeps them coming back for more of his wisdom and clinical acumen. Today, Nikki has some words of wisdom to offer at the class of 2018. I have no jokes today. <laughs> Graduates of the class of 2018, fellow faculty, colleagues, friends and family here today. First, I would like to thank the Alumni Society for this incredible honor. Thank you to my wife, Dr. Kara Frasco, um, my two boys, <clears throat> excuse me. 
Charlie and Andy, who are here with us to share this moment. I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for you and your love and encouragement. To the graduating class of 2018, congratulations on your accomplishments. It's a milestone occasion that we're celebrating today. Because this is an early professional award, I can say that it was not that long ago that I was sitting in your seat. <laughs> but it feels really like a long time ago. I was sitting there at our convocation ceremony, eagerly waiting for the next phase of my life. So I looked to my left, to my right, at my fellow graduates, and now lifelong friends. I was really wondering to myself, what am I gonna do now? <laughs> I came to optometry school so I could help people see. It was during this process of classes with finals, proficiencies and practicals, clinics, extra and rotations, that I was able to see the impact of our profession, that every one of us sitting here today we're going to go out into our communities and improve the lives of our patients. That was kind of when I realized I wanted to be a part of that process. I wanted to contribute. I wanted to help teach students to become great cl clinicians, leaders in their community, and to grow our profession to become an integral part of the health and lives of our patients. Luckily, I was able to look to my faculty mentors, most of whom are on this stage tonight, because I am an early professional. <laughs> they were able to help me find my way to where I am today. I've been a faculty member for the last 14 years, and I know there's still so much that we can accomplish to advance a level of training for the future of our profession. This graduation weekend is always such a wonderful time for me, especially with you, the class of 2018. You're the first class that I sat on the admissions committee with, Dr. Early, I think we did a really good job. <laughs> it's such a proud moment for me to see all of you walk across the stage. It's times like these that remind me of how much I love what I do. In your life, take a few moments to appreciate what you have and who you have around you. The moment of reflection gives us a chance to see where we've gone, to see the path that we're on, and to see where we can go. So as I take this moment right now, I'm so appreciative of my wife and children, my family here at the Ohio State University College of Optometry, and I am excited to see what lays ahead of us. Congratulations to the best class of 2018, <laughs> and thank you so much for this amazing honor. I don't think we traded scripts here. Um, the 2018 Distinguished Alumna of the Year Award, the highest honor bestowed by the Ohio State University Optometry Alumni Society, goes to Dr. Jackie Davis. Jackie graduated from our college with her optometry degree in 1982 and pra practiced optometry for many years actively in the community. She served on the State Board of Optometry that processes optometric licensure, um, including two terms as president. Then she made an up-ending career change and earned her MPH in her spare time while she was practicing optometry full-time from our College of Public Health and then joined our faculty. Tonight, whatever festivities you have or what you're doing tomorrow at brunch or whatever families and friends, I want you to ask your person that's in this class what they learned from Dr. Jackie Davis and what she contributed to their education. I think they will tell you that they, she has contributed greatly specifically to their growth as compassionate healthcare providers and that her impact on them they will find in the future is both remarkable and long-lasting. Jackie, please offer your thoughts to the class of 2018. Well, 
first, let me just say what a, an awesome um, recognition. And I, I do this what I love, and um, to be recognized for it is, is just amazing. Um, I also want to say thank you to the support that I have received from my family. I have my sister, my son, my husband, and my 95-year-old mother here with me today. And uh, and without their support, I couldn't have done any of this. Um, there is a saying that um, says, if you do what you love, you'll never work a day of your life. And I think that's a beautiful saying, but I have a little bit of a problem with that. <laughs> because I have been doing what I love for the past 37 years, but I have worked just about every day <laughs> of those 37 years. And um, the reason why I love what I do is that the rewards that I receive from this profession way outweigh the efforts that I have put into it. One of the rewards that I have received from being involved in this profession is watching the class of 2018. As you all came into the program, I also was on the admissions committee with some of you all, and I got to see you come in, and yes, we did a good job. Um, and I've watched you come in and make new friends. Um, I've seen you study your hearts out for exams, proficiencies, preparing for national boards, and doing all the things you started out with maybe four-hour exams, and then they became three-hour exams and two-hour exams, and um, just, just all the things that are necessary to make fantastic optometrists, and all to get to this culminating day. So I do say congratulations for all of your hard work. So that, I don't think that there's anybody who would say that it was easy, am I right? Anybody wanna say that it was easy? Okay, okay. So it wasn't easy, it was hard work, but I'm here to tell you that that hard work that you have com completed and accomplished you're about to embark on a path that's going to take you to higher levels and even harder work. But the great thing about the hard work that you have to look forward to, you're not going to be studying for an A or a B or a C. You're not going to be having attendings to sign off on your uh, assessments and plans. But you're going to be working for your own personal satisfaction and that is a wonderful thing to be have as a goal to work towards and your personal satisfaction comes from maybe working with a child and maybe doing some uh, binocular vision training and to realize that your efforts are going to help that child progress in their schoolwork it might come from educating a patient who has an A1C of 12 and you letting them know that if they do a better job of controlling their blood sugar levels, maybe they will not lose their sight down the road. Um, I had a highlight in my career a couple of weeks ago at Lower Lights, where is my clinic with a Ashley Bolinski. Uh, we had a patient that came in and uh, he was 12 years old, and then his mother came in and gave all of us a round of hugs, and we had tears, because she said to us, thank you for saving my son's life. And it doesn't get much better than that. <laughs> so you have great things to look forward to, and it's going to be a new path that you're going to be taking, and it's going to be work to build your career. I encourage you to be an active driver of your career, not a passive passenger. You have had many exposures during your rotations and during all the clinics that you have. There's a lot of paths in optometry to take. But I, hope, I encourage you to look for new horizons. I, I'm 
just predicting that there are going to be things out there that we can't even think about, about what optometry is going to offer to you. I encourage you to use your heart, to use your mind, to weigh all of the possibilities. I'm also going to throw out, add a little prayer to that so that you can make sound decisions in your career. I'm going to end with a quote from Maya Angelou. She said, if you're going down a road and you look ahead and you don't like what you see, and then you turn around and you look back and you don't like what you saw back there, then change your path. Create a new path. There are so many wonderful paths in this profession. This profession is a service profession, so don't forget that. It's not that your patients are coming in to serve you, you are going to go out to serve them. And so I just hope that your journey will give you as much fulfillment and joy as what I have had over the past 37 years. Congratulations, class of 2018. Before we recognize our graduate students in vision science, I'd like to have you all help me acknowledge a signature achievement by one of our faculty. Jenny Fote, would you stand, please? Tomorrow, Dr. Jenny Fote, associate clinical professor, will receive her Master's of Science in Pharmacology with a concentration in clinical pharmacology and clinical trial design from our nearby College of Nursing. Please congratulate her for me. I'm hoping that one-ups whatever the College of Nursing will have, has done for her or will do for her. So many of you in the audience may not know that in addition to our optometry program, we also house a graduate program in vision science. It is one of six such programs based at major universities in the United States, and our master's and PhD students fill many leadership roles and have done so in the past, Errol Augsburger, in academic optometry across the country. Please welcome Dr. Jeff Walleen, Associate Dean for Research, to the podium where he will present our 2018 graduate students. I too am a member of the Admissions Committee, and this class of 2018 is so strong that I think the Admissions Committee deserves a raise, Dr. Zednick. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations to the class of 2018. Today we are here to celebrate your past accomplishments and your future lives. We are also here to celebrate 14 people receiving master's degrees and one person receiving a PhD degree, all in vision science. The graduate program in vision science is a vibrant program of vision research dedicated to the improvement or our knowledge of the visual system in order to better treat individuals suffering from vision symptoms or loss. Will Drs. Emmanuel Owusu, Marjean Culp, and Nick Fote please come to the front of the stage? Tomorrow, Dr. Owusu will receive his PhD degree and hood at the SHU. Dr. Wusu successfully defended his dissertation titled An Investigation into the Neural Basis of Convergence Eye Movements, which incorporated clinical tests and functional magnetic resonance imaging of the brain to determine the neural basis of crossing the eyes. Dr. Wusu was supervised by Drs. Marjean Culp and Nick Fote. Please help me congratulate Dr. Wusu. And just a quick note, when, when Dr. Wusu came from Ghana four years ago, he arrived in the U.S. on the day that his daughter was born and has been home once to see his children who are now six, four, and two years old. Class loves him. We love him. Congratulations, Emmanuel.
We will now hood three advanced practice fellows who spent two years in a clinical fellowship in an area of specialty and at the same time earned a master's degree. Will doctors A.J. Pfeiffer and Katie McDaniel please come to the front of the stage? Dr. A.J. Pfeiffer receives his master's degree as part of the Advanced Practice Fellowship in Binocular Vision and Pediatrics. Dr. Pfeiffer served as an instructor in the BVP service and he conducted research project and defended his thesis called the Canvas Concussion Study, which stands for the Collaborative Assessment of Neurocognition and Vision in Adolescents with Sports-Related Concussion Study. <laughs> Please help me congratulate Dr. A.J. Pfeiffer. Will doctors Kate McClure, Dean Van Asdale, and Nikki Lai please come to the front of the stage? Dr. Kate McClure receives her master's degree as part of the Advanced Practice Fellowship in Contact Lenses. Dr. McClure served as an instructor in the Contact Lens Service and she conducted a research project and defended her thesis titled Tear Film Dynamics Associated with Contact Lens Wear. Please help me congratulate Dr. McClure. <laughs> Will doctors Kelsey Steele and Nikki Lai please come to the front of the stage? Dr. Kelsey Steele receives her master's degree as part of the Advanced Practice Fellowship in Contact Lenses. Dr. Steele served as an instructor in Contact Lens Service, and she conducted a research project and defended her title, thesis, her thesis titled Contact Lenses and Water Exposure, Current Practice Patterns and Perceptions. We are very pleased that Dr. Steele will continue in the Vision Science program next year as a PhD student. Please help me congratulate Dr. Steele. And now, will all of the combined ODMS students please line up, future doctors, to the patient's left, right over here. <laughs> no, really, now. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> students will go in alphabetical order. We'll have you come to the center stage, and your advisors will come by me right here and pick up a certificate. The graduate program in vision science is a vibrant program of vision research dedicated to the improvement of our knowledge of the visual system in order to better the treatment of individuals suffering from vision symptoms or loss. The class of 2018 is, com is comprised entirely of hardworking, intelligent students, but a few of them were particularly opportunistic. While earning their optometry degree, 11 students, which is a record number of combined ODMS students, took extra courses conducted research projects, and wrote and defended their theses in order to earn a, quote unquote, free master's degree. It truly cost them no money, but they paid more than that in basically copious sweat and maybe a few occasional tears. Um, these students will receive their master's degrees at tomorrow's graduation ceremony at the SHU, but today we will present each of these students with a $500 award, in case you didn't know that, and either the James A. Bing or the Vincent J. Ellerbrock Award. To describe those awards, the James A. Bing Award was established in 1947 by the OOA, or Ohio Optometric Association, in honor of Dr. James A. Bing. The award recognizes outstanding graduates for their work in the area of visual perception. And the Vincent J. Ellerbrock Award was established in 1966 in memory of Dr. Vincent Ellerbrock, former professor of optometry and vision science. The award recognizes exceptional student achievement in the field of vision science. I will announce each student, his or her advisor, the award received, and the title of the thesis. The first student we will announce is Dr. David, almost Dr. David Beckett, <laughs> and he was advised by Dr. Donald Muti. 
he will receive the James A. Bing Award, and his thesis was titled, The Effect of Light Exposure and Refractive Error on Post-Illumination Pupil Responses. Our next recipient <laughs> is Jacob Boroff. He was advised by Drs. Catherine Bickle and me. He will receive the James A. Bing Award, and the title of his thesis was the longest title I've ever made myself, The Objective and Subjective Visual Performance of Soft Multifocal Contact Lenses of Various Ad Powers and Center Optic Zone Sizes Study. <laughs> I'm known for acronyms, that one didn't make it. <laughs> the next recipient, recipient is Margaret Bruckner. She was advised by Dr. Tang Ling Oi, and she will be presented the award by Dr. Jackie Davis. She's receiving the James A. Bing Award for her thesis titled The Binocular Visual Field in Glaucoma. Our next recipient is Colleen Doyle, who is advised by Dr. Andy Hartwick. She will receive the Vincent J. Ellerbrock Award for her thesis titled, The Effect of Short-Term Light Ex Exposure on Alertness. And our fifth recipient is, Dr. Or is Jennifer Fromberg, and she was advised by doctors Tom Roche and Ryan Flom, and she will be presented her award by Dr. Bradley Doherty, and she will receive the James A. Bing Award for her thesis titled Orvis, the Ohio Reading and Visual Impairment Study. Our next student is Corey Lappin, who is advised by Dr. T.J. Plagman and will be presented award by Dr. Heather Chandler. He is receiving the Vincent J. Ellerbrock Award for his thesis titled, Investigating the Role of Shroom 3 in Collagen Regulation and Development of the Corneal Stroma. The next student is Elizabeth Libby Limos, who is advised by Dr. Nick Fote. She will receive the Vincent J. Ellerbrock Award for her thesis titled, Comparison of Coincidence, Anticipation Timing Under Binocular and Monocular Conditions. Next student is Amber Mathias, who is advised by Dr. Bradley Doherty. She will receive the James A. Bing Award for her thesis, which is longer than the longest one, The Effect of Bioptic Telescopic Spectacles, Use on Sign Identification, Velocity, and Lane Deviation in a Driving Simulator in People with Central Vision Impairment. I think that's her whole thesis. That is such a good title. <laughs> Next student is Erica Shelton, who is advised by Dr. Heather Chandler. She will receive the Vincent J. Ellerbrock Award for her thesis titled, Autophagy Regulation in Cyclosporin-Treated Lens Epithelial Cells. Our next student is Heather Van La, who is advised by Dr. Colleen Sabula, but will be presented by me for receiving the Vincent J. Ellerbrock Award for her thesis titled, MIF Promoter Polymisms in Vitreo Retinal Disease. <laughs> and last but most certainly not least, Brennan Yaquinto was advised by Dr. Nick Fote, and he will receive the James A. Bing Award for his thesis titled, Rapid Pointing Performance Comparison Between Spectacle and Contact Lens Wear. Congratulations, Ben.
please join me one more time in congratulating these 11 combined ODMS students, three APF students, and one PhD student on receipt of their graduate diplomas. Good luck, class of 2018. We are ready for the main event. Um, the moment you have all been waiting for and came for. Audience, you've been waiting for a few minutes. These talented students have been anti anticipating this for at least the last four years and probably undergraduate as they aspired to attend optometry school. So let me give you an idea of what's going to happen next. Um, family and friends, the, the graduates are assembled in the front rows in alphabetical order. They will come up to the stage and be hooded in the optometric academic regalia one by one by Drs. Mike Early and Greg Nixon. Um, they'll be assisted for several of these graduates by those graduates' optometrist relatives. And guest hooders, if Mike and Greg don't get out of your way, just take care of it, okay? Uh, one of our past guest hooders told us the relationships created because of Ohio State are numerous and immeasurable. Wherever you plant an OH, expect an IO to grow. So if when your, your person comes across the stage, please feel free to come to the front of the auditorium to take photographs as he or she is hooded. Don't block our professional photographer, however, because we promise to share those pictures with you. And most importantly, please do not fall into the orchestra pit. Um, as part of the hooding ceremony, it's become our custom to have a faculty member selected by the class to tell you a little bit about them. Uh, this year, EF Wildermuth Professor Dr. Don Muti is deeply honored at having been selected by the class of 2018 to read their names as the graduates are hooded. He will also read a couple of sentences that the students supplied about themselves so that you can get to know them just a little bit better. After hooding, they will be welcomed to the optometric profession and to the Ohio State University Optometry Alumni Society by Dr. Vince Driggs. So soon to be doctors of optometry and full-fledged colleagues, here we go. You know, I was on that admissions committee also. <laughs> I'm very happy to, uh, to see this was exactly the day that I had in mind when uh, I checked the box and said, oh yeah, we need these students here. Congratulations, class of 2018. It's been a few years since the Chief Ray, Knapp's Law, and so I am deeply grateful for the honor of being among the first to publicly tie your name together with that title that you've been working so hard to earn. But friends and family, this is a happy occasion, so please don't be shy about making some noise as I say your graduate's name and they come to the stage to be hooded. Dr. Lael Abi Rashed. When I opened my acceptance letter to the Ohio State University College of Optometry, I thought it was the best day of my life. That was true until I found out I passed my national board exams. <laughs> now, as I walk across this stage with all the amazingly brilliant and exceptional friends I've made during my four years here, I know that having chosen a career and not just a job, life will be filled with many more extraordinary best days of my life. Dr. Noor Abushagar. Four years, 185 credit hours, 55 courses, 29 clinical attendings, 10 states, three
the back. Dead microphone. No karaoke. <laughs> Dr. Sarah Boffman. <laughs> Sarah would like to thank her fellow classmates. She would like to thank you for all the laughs and for quoting TV and movies with her and not getting mad that her quotes haven't changed in four years. Oh, and also, for helping her get through optometry school, she would not be here if not for all of you. <laughs> Dr. David Beckett. I wish words were able to express my gratitude to my instructors, to my classmates, and to my family. Thank you for four remarkable years. <laughs> Dr. Jessica Bodimer. Jessica would like to say goodbye to her classmates and hello to her colleagues. Congratulations on this exciting achievement and good luck in all your future successful careers. <laughs> Dr. Jacob Boroff. No better way to finish a phenomenal four years at the best optometry school in the country than to graduate on my birthday. <laughs> I would like to thank my fellow classmates and staff at The Ohio State University College of Optometry for a memorable four years. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to Jacob. Happy birthday to you. I, karaoke, I can't help it. <laughs> Dr. Margaret Brucker. <laughs> the day Meg got into the Ohio State University was the day she started believing in the quote, everything happens for a reason. Through all of the sweat and tears, dilated pupils and finger cramps, these four years of optometry school have been the best and most rewarding of her life. She is proud to have attended the best darn optometry school in the land and is lucky to have not only made lifelong friends, but lifelong colleagues. Class of 2018, we are all here for a reason today. Let's make Ohio State optometry proud. O-H. Dr. Ashley Bulinski. <laughs> Ashley credits copious amounts of chocolate and ballet classes as her secrets to success during her time here at the Ohio State University College of Optometry. She's looking forward to diving into her year of residency in ocular disease at the Dayton VA Medical Center before moving to Grand Rapids, Michigan to join her fiance and pups. <laughs> Dr. Nicholas Carr.
Nick Carr hails from the village of Metamora in Northwest Ohio and is proud to be here today proving even with one eye, you can still become an optometrist. <laughs> Dr. Tawny Cashon. Way to go, Cashon! <laughs> Tawny would like to thank her classmates for all of the fun and support the last four years. It is hard to imagine starting our careers without us all working side by side, but she is honored to call you all her colleagues. Tawny is excited to start her career practicing in Central Ohio and is looking forward to her wedding this June. <laughs> Dr. Anthony Chang. I tried to live up to my white coat statement three years ago about exploring new restaurants and eating good food. As it can be seen in the bombardment of food photos on Facebook, AKA my food blog. And as I ventured on these daily food journeys, I am glad to have been able to share some good meals and some wonderful friends. And also cashing in the rewards of a few pounds gained and the clinic pants a few sizes up. <laughs> Dr. Daniel Dougherty. Dan will be joining a private practice in Northeast Ohio. After having student football tickets for eight years, he may finally have to start work some Saturdays. <laughs> the schedule is still under negotiation. Dr. Tyler Dowdle. <laughs> Tyler is looking forward to beginning his optometric career back home in Cincinnati, Ohio. He will certainly miss being able to sport a beautiful mustache every so often, <laughs> as he, Dan, and Robbie did for each of their finals these past few years although he may still try to pull it off for old time's sake until his fiance forces him to shave. <laughs> Dr. Colleen Doyle. As Colleen heads back to that state up north, she is thankful to have lifelong friends, countless memories in rooms 22 and 33, that nightmare of pulling an all-nighter studying for that farm final in room 11, and an education from not only her professors and attendings, but also her classmates, who she is happy to now call her colleagues. She knows her grandpa, who is a former Ohio State graduate and whose birthday is today, is smiling knowing that she's bringing that Buckeye pride back up to Michigan. <laughs> Dr. Katherine Fisher. <laughs> Catherine is very excited to graduate and return to her hometown of Springboro, Ohio. She will be joining a practice that is conveniently located across the street from her nephew's daycare. It's a dream come true. The job is nice too. <laughs> Dr. Jenna M. Foglio. As I prepare for my residency at Erie VA Medical Center, 
I take with me a first-rate education, lifelong friendships, and the inspiration of my classmates and mentors. And with me always will be my sincere gratitude for the love and support of my family. <laughs> Dr. Evangelia Fragulis. <laughs> Putting Dr. Fragulis will be her mother, Dr. Maria Fragulis. After receiving her acceptance to The Ohio State University, Evangelia could not have anticipated the amount of really bright lights, suction lenses, and Mr. Lee's severed rubbered arms that were to come. Nonetheless, the program not only gave her a career, it gave her a better life. Classmates have become family, helping redefine her path with memories and support. She looks forward to implementing this education into practice with her inspiration and now her boss, her mother. <laughs> Dr. Jennifer Fromberg. Jen is eagerly awaiting her delayed honeymoon cruise to Alaska in a few weeks. She then looks forward to settling down and working in her hometown of Chicago. <laughs> Dr. Morgan Garsick. Before deciding to go to optometry school, Morgan thought she wanted to be a physical therapist. Coincidentally, her dad pulled his hamstring while water skiing and needed physical therapy. So Morgan decided to tag along to the appointment. The PT, of course, wanted Morgan to have a real hands-on experience. But when she found herself over the therapy table, searching for a hamstring tear, thumbs deep below her dad's backside, it was at that moment that Morgan decided eyes were more her thing. <laughs> Dr. Leslie S. Gibson. Thanks to my parents, for always propelling me forward without pushing too hard. Libby for being the best study buddy and friend I could have ever asked for, and my husband for loving and encouraging me through all the ups and downs of the past four years. <laughs> Dr. Lauren Godlin. Thanks to my parents for always propelling, oops, sorry, when Lauren <laughs> began applying to optometry schools, she never thought she would end up at The Ohio State University. She is incredibly thankful for all the new experiences and friendships that have occurred over these past four years. She can't believe they are coming to an end. She hopes to begin her optometric career in a private practice setting. Dr. Kelsey Hankey. <laughs> Special thanks to coffee, wine, and Wikipedia for making all of this possible. Oh, and mom and dad. <laughs> Dr. Marka Renee Hobbs. <laughs> 
All of my life, I've always been embarrassed of my lazy eye and eye turn. That is until optometry school. Optometry school has shown me that it is okay to be a little different and to embrace it. I no longer see my wandering eyes as a weakness, but as a strength that will help me better connect with my future patients. <laughs> Dr. Shannon Honeycutt. Shannon would like to thank her parents for serving as her practice patients, even when they felt like falling asleep in the exam chair. <laughs> she would like to thank her classmates for always being willing to practice just one more time before the practical. Shannon is excited to see what the next chapter in life has in store for her. <laughs> Dr. Ashley Hughes. From the age of 10, Ashley set the bar high for her future aspiration of becoming an optometrist, even if it turned out that she was the shortest person in the class of 2018. Her time at OSU was filled with making lifelong friendships, attending late night practice sessions for practicals, reaching milestones like the white coat ceremony, and celebrating small victories like passing boards. Ashley looks forward to starting her career in Zanesville. Dr. Abe Ibrahim. <laughs> Once upon a time, there was a beautiful man named Abe <laughs> who conquered Columbus, triumphed in Toledo, and mastered Mansfield. What's next for our man of steel? <laughs> he plans to spread his wings and fly in Phoenix. <laughs> Dr. Brian J. First and foremost, I'm thankful for all the love and support of my family and friends through my life. As I jumpstart into my optometry career, I will never forget the great opportunities I've had at Ohio State. From traveling to multiple cities and states, to attending multiple optometry events and meeting numerous people, it's been a journey I'll never forget and couldn't have made without the College of Optometry. I'm excited and humbled to start my career knowing I've attended the best college, made the best friends, and had the best experiences to look back on. <laughs> Dr. Jasmine Jung. <laughs> I would like to thank my family and friends for their continuous support and love throughout this time in optometry school. Thank you for always believing in me. This accomplishment wouldn't have been possible without you guys. Thank you. <laughs> Dr. Marissa Linda Carapasha. I will never forget the first eye exam I gave. It was on my 24th birthday, and Jimmy, my boyfriend, was my first patient ever. That day, he not only sacrificed his eyes for me, he gave me a present, too. I knew he was the one. There it is. <laughs> Dr. Paula Kelbley.
Coming from one of the smallest towns in Ohio to one of the largest campuses in America, Ohio State was the best decision I've ever made. I've enjoyed all eight years of this scarlet and gray journey to becoming an optometrist. My journey will continue at Indiana University where I'll be completing a residency in pediatric eye care. Dr. Vance Koo. I don't like talking about myself, but I do love food. So instead, I would like to share recommended restaurants in Columbus. Akai Hana Sushi, Marcella's Meatballs, amen. Bell's Bread Mango Mousse, Kuko's Fajitas, Mexico Ramen, and Amul's Curry. Bon Appetit! <laughs> Dr. Blake Kvit. <laughs> Optometry school wasn't busy enough. So we had a kid during second year midterms. <laughs> then, since that was too easy, we decided to have another one right before graduation and our move back to North Dakota in a couple days. <laughs> Wouldn't have done it any other way. My wife and kids are amazing. <laughs> Dr. Corey J. Lappin. Corey is well known for previously owning a pet goat, working as a carny, and occasionally sporting a mustache. His love for flannel shirts and tank tops is almost equaled by his dislike of sleeves. <laughs> if he wasn't an optometrist, he would most likely be a lumberjack. Dr. Elizabeth Lemos. Three things I have learned over the past four years. First, that Maya is, unbiasedly, the best dog ever. Second, that craft beer is pretty awesome. And third, that people can't tell Leslie and me apart. <laughs> really? <laughs> I mean, David and Jacob, I get, but this, okay. I, I am excited. I am excited to continue my learning over the next year at the Dayton VA. <laughs> Dr. Stephen Thomas Manning. Pudding Dr. Manning will be his father, Dr. Bruce Manning. Stephen is excited. Yes, I Stephen is excited to receive his diploma tomorrow on his first anniversary with his wonderful wife, Allie. He is proud to join both his father and brother, who are also alumni of The Ohio State University College of Optometry. <laughs> Dr. Amber Mathias. Amber has taken advantage of the opportunities on her journey to become an optometrist through volunteering for SVOSH mission trips, organizing Lions Club events, presenting her master's research, and traveling for conferences. Thank you to all who made the journey special along the way, especially friends who have become like family. She is looking forward to fulfilling her dreams by practicing full scope medical optometry in Findlay, Ohio.
Dr. Jordan Matushka. Jordan has enjoyed her time in Ohio and is so thankful for the skills, memories, and lifelong friendships that she gets to take with her. Jordan will be returning to her hometown in Wisconsin after graduation. She is looking forward to a summer involving boat rides and bonfires with her family and is very excited to start her career working alongside her childhood optometrist. Dr. Lauren McCall Mitchell. Lauren made her best and lifelong friends in optometry school. She is so incredibly grateful for all the people she has met, the things she learned, the memories she has made, it wouldn't change a thing. Well, maybe she would change the endless hours of the school, sleepless nights, and stress eating binge sessions. But hey, we made it. Dr. Margaret Moore. My plans after graduation include moving to Connecticut for a residency in ocular disease and low vision rehabilitation at the West Haven VA Hospital and convincing my husband that we should adopt a rescue dog sooner rather than later. Currently, he's thinking three years, but on a resident salary, we can definitely compromise and push that up to three weeks from now. <laughs> right, James? James? <laughs> Dr. Idil Ovutman. First and foremost, Idil thanks her parents for their unending support. She is excited to spend the summer on a journey to reconnect with her roots and sail the Aegean Sea. I know. <laughs> I want to go to there. Dr. Olivia O. Oyagunle. Olivia, an Atlanta native with Nigerian background, is a <laughs> and a lot of family, <laughs> is a proud alumna, let's hear it for this one, is a proud alumna of the University of Georgia. <laughs> she is elated to be hooded amidst her family, friends, and colleagues. Go dogs. Dr. Elam Qureshi. <laughs> Elam would like to thank her family for their endless support over the past four years. She also says thanks in advance, since she's moving back home this Monday and beginning her career in private practice in Herndon, Virginia. Dr. Emily N. Rausch. All right, Emily. Emily is planning to pursue private practice in Columbus, focusing on pediatrics, binocular vision, and vision therapy. The thing she's most excited about following graduation is that she can finally start to pay off her student loans. She is grateful for the class of 2018, faculty, staff, and her family and friends for all the support the past four years. <laughs> Dr. Maxwell Renneker. <laughs> Anna.
as a Spartan, I was unsure about living in Buckeye country for four years. However, I am thankful for the lifetime friends I have made, and I can't wait to begin my career in Cleveland with my favorite Buckeye of all. <laughs> but for Ohio State. Dr. Kevin Scott Rada. Kevin is excited to start his next adventure after optometry school by providing eye care at a private practice outside Minneapolis, Minnesota. Donations of hot chocolate will be greatly appreciated. <laughs> Although considered an emerging presbyope by the class who will need bifocus before many of his classmates, Kevin will always remain the baby brother to his siblings. Brian and Jen, that's Dr. Baby Brother to you now. <laughs> Dr. Danielle Sabelli. Danielle is proud of all of her classmates who over time became friends and friends who today become colleagues. Remember that though we have achieved our goal, we didn't come this far only to come this far. Dr. Jessica Saran. <laughs> Jessica would like to thank her family, especially her grandma, for her endless support and encouragement. She's excited to move back to the beautiful state of Michigan to practice. Education without action is useless, so let's all remember to find a way to better the world with the knowledge we have all gained over the past four years. <laughs> Dr. Erica Shelton. While in school, Erica has most enjoyed volunteering for mission trips through SVOSH, traveling for conferences, and rating the best tacos in Columbus. In case you're curious, her favorite is Junior's Tacos on the corner of Fifth and Highland. She is excited to continue eating tacos in Columbus as she begins her binocular vision and pediatric residency at Ohio State and pursues her dream of owning a corgi. <laughs> Dr. Munkaran Singh. <laughs> Ohio State was not where I initially wanted to attend optometry school, but circumstances led me to choose this program, and it ended up being four of the most meaningful and impactful years of my life. Dr. Casey Smith. I am thankful to be a forever Buckeye. Through all the late night study sessions and practicals, I have made some unforgettable moments with the class of 2018. As excited as I am to be finished with this journey, I also feel lucky to have new friendships that make saying goodbye so hard. <laughs> Dr. Zachary Stapleton. <laughs> I would like to let you know that if you need me, I'll be celebrating graduation by sitting on my couch for the entire month of May. <laughs> Dr.
Dr. Jenny Steinemann. Jenny is excited to start a residency in ocular disease at the Columbus Chillicothe Veterans Affair Medical Center this summer. The last eight years here at Ohio State have brought her many happy memories and lifelong friendships. <laughs> Dr. Robert Sunderman. I would like to thank my parents, Rick and Beth, for their endless support, and give a special shout out to my grandparents, Dick and Jude, who traveled from Florida to be here today. My plans after graduation include moving back to my hometown of Cincinnati to be closer to my two older brothers. <laughs> Dr. Jenny Tran. Growing up, Walt Disney told us, all our dreams can come true if we have the courage to pursue them. Today, our dreams come true thanks to the ever-loving support of our parents, families, and friends. <laughs> Dr. Heather Van Law. Among all of her experiences during optometry school, Heather's favorite adventures have included cliff diving in Jamaica, zip lining in Guatemala, volcano hiking in Nicaragua, and skydiving in Ohio. <laughs> in addition to studying every now and then, her next adventure on, on the list is moving back out west to complete a residency in primary care brain injury rehabilitation at the Palo Alto VA in California. Wear a helmet. Dr. Ellen Vandenberg. This summer, I'll be moving to Cleveland with Max and starting my residency at the Lewis Stokes Cleveland VA Medical Center. I get another year in Ohio to convince Max that he is secretly a Buckeye fan. Most importantly, I'll finally be able to get a dog. <laughs> Dr. Tunde Sandy Veras. Sandy knows that she wouldn't be standing here today without the support of all of her family and friends and the grace that God has given her through this crazy and wonderful journey of optometry school that included countless hours of studying, practicing, and of course, watching Harry Potter. She is excited to continue serving her favorite population of geriatric patients during her residency at the Chillicothe Columbus VA next year and just wants to remind everyone that her nephews are still cuter than everyone else's nephews. <laughs> Dr. Eric Thomas Ward. While Eric is excited to have finally earned the title of optometrist after four long years, he is even more excited for the new title he'll be acquiring in a few short months, Dad. <laughs> the sleepless nights of optometry school will continue 
this time for a different reason. Dr. Michael Watt. I would like to thank my family, as their love and support have helped me every step of the way. From tailgates and plating for the Fighting Iris, to themed block parties with friends, I will cherish these memories forever. I plan on returning to my home state of North Carolina to practice and to represent the best optometry program in the country, OH. Dr. Kimberly Weisenberger. <laughs> Putting Dr. Weisenberger will be her mother, Dr. Kathy Wise. Kim is looking forward to spending her next two years at the College of Optometry completing an advanced practice fellowship in cornea and contact lenses. <laughs> Dr. Herbert Tanner Wensing. Tanner would like to celebrate his graduation by sharing one of his favorite quotes with his classmates. Mark Twain wrote, 20 years from now, you will be more disappointed by the things you didn't do than by the ones you did. So throw your bow lines, sail away from the safe harbor, catch the trade winds in your sails, explore, dream, discover. Dr. Taylor Whitley. Over the past four years, Taylor has been blessed to work with amazing optometric organizations, traveled to several countries on mission trips, and made incredible lifelong friends. Taylor has a passion for geriatric and traumatic brain injury patients and looks forward to working in a vision therapy-based practice in the future. On top of the ample support from her family, friends, and boyfriend, she owes a special shout out to her cats, Miko and Pepino, for being the best sidekicks throughout this journey. <laughs> Dr. Rebecca Windham. Brad Henry once said, families are the compass that guides us. I want to thank my family for always directing me towards my dreams and inspiring me to reach great heights. <laughs> Dr. Jeannie Shea. I'm looking forward to moving back to Chicago to practice optometry. I want to thank my parents for all their support. I would also like to quote Kurt Schneider. We're not just gathered here on a lovely May day in an ordinary auditorium at The Ohio State University. We're all strapped in, seated together on a gigantic ball whirling around the sun at 67,000 miles per hour, nested in a galaxy hurtling through the depths of space and time at 1.3 million miles an hour. Buckle up. <laughs> Dr. Brennan Yaquinto. Putting Dr. Yaquinto will be his uncle, Dr. Tom Ritter.
Brenna would like to thank his parents for their support, his friends for making these four years fun, and the office for getting him through the tough times. He learned that his bed was more effective for studying than the library, but the back room of the Isai house was the best. He will be uh, completing an ocular disease residency at Columbus Ophthalmology Associates this upcoming year. And last but not least, Dr. Stephanie Yarnell. I am really happy to be standing here today because I already threw away my winter coat <laughs> in anticipation of moving to San Diego, California after graduation. Goodbye to six month long winters, falling on the ice and snow in April. Sunshine, here I come. <laughs> Congratulations once again, class of 2018. Doctors, you have an important task to perform now, the first one you will take on as doctors of optometry. Please stand, graduates, and face the back of the room. Look for your family, friends, and loyal supporters, and now you thank them for, well, everything by giving them the best round of applause we've heard today. All right, now I need every optometrist in, this includes you, in the room to please stand because I have the privilege of leading those assembled in their, the, the class in their first public utterance of the optometric oath. The others have done it before. All optometrists on the stage and in the audience, find the oath in your program, stand, raise your right hand, and please read the oath along with me. With full deliberation, I solemnly pledge that I will practice the art and science of optometry to the fullest scope of my competence. I will uphold and honorably promote the highest standards, ethics, and ideals. I will provide professional care with concern, compassion, and due regard for human rights and dignity. I will place the treatment of those who seek my care above personal gain and strive to see that none shall lack for proper care. I will hold as privileged all information entrusted to me in confidence by my patients. I will advise my patients fully and honestly of all which may serve to restore, maintain, or enhance their vision and general health. I will strive continuously to broaden my knowledge and skills. I will share information with my fellow optometrists and other professionals for the benefit of my patients. I will do my utmost to serve my community, my country, and humankind as a citizen as well as an optometrist. Thank you, you can be seated. Our last speaker of the evening gets to represent the class of 2018. You've seen them, you've heard a little bit of them through Dr. Muti. Um, he's a graduate of Miami University and has led this class um, particularly ably and well. Please welcome Optometry Class of 2018 President, Dr. Corey Lappin. <laughs> Speeches like this are very difficult to make. How do you summarize four years to encapsulate everything we did and accomplished? 
Well, I still have no idea, but this is what I came up with anyway. <laughs> I kept thinking back to our very first week of optometry school. We were getting started on a new journey with new people in a new city for many of us, and everyone working toward a new profession. What sticks out the most to me about that was our welcome dinner, particularly two things that Dean Zadnick mentioned that really seem to resonate now. That optometry is like a family, and that every class has a unique personality that over the next four years, we would discover. Nearly 70 strangers were at that dinner that night, but over the next four years, those strangers would become close friends. These are the kind of friendships that can only develop when you spend eight to, 20, eight to 12 hours together a day, sometimes more. These friendships became so close that perhaps the best way to describe them would actually be family. We did everything together. We studied together, we shared successes and struggles, we traveled the world on mission trips, we celebrated the college centennial with a gala and enjoyed many other dinners and events. We went to conferences and vacations together, and we attended or were even part of each other's weddings. We endured eclipse madness, and some of us even jumped out of a plane together. Along the way, we also developed an identity as a class. Some classes are calm, quiet, and like to go about their work with a gentle, peaceful demeanor. That was not our class. <laughs> We were loud, rambunctious, and full of life. Every 10 minute break was full of conversation and laughter. We truly enjoyed each other's company, but we were also passionate and driven. We would prepare, often over-prepare, for every exam, practical, or quiz, always striving to do our best. And as a class, we learned many important lessons. Thanks to Dr. Early, we learned everything that could possibly kill us. <laughs> Dr. Fote taught us every conceivable question they could ask us at the VA. And we learned what anatomy notes would be considered important, including the fact that the sclera is the white part of the eye. <laughs> and really importantly, to be successful in private practice, we need to have a trash can every 27 steps. <laughs> we learned what controlled chaos was the morning when exams off expired when we were going to take our last summer final. We also discovered that room 22 could also function as an aquarium during the great flood of Fry Hall. We found out that apparently nothing is more terrifying than trying to learn astigmatism two days before an optics exam. <laughs> and epidemiology taught us to turn up for what? <laughs> and of course, we learned that nothing could throw us into a panic more than the phrase, grades are up. <laughs> and of course, we learned the monumental fact that the population is aging. <laughs> I don't know if you knew that. We also discovered that patients love to save the most important information for the end of their exam, and they will only tell your attending. <laughs> and of course, we all know, regardless of what we tell them, patients will always park at the meters. And we also discovered, well, I discovered, that shirts aren't necessary as long as you have a tie and a white coat. <laughs> and also that physically hoisting children during school screenings is acceptable. We learned to th say things like a doctor, and somehow through all this, we learned to be optometrists too. So as we prepare to begin our careers, I believe these friendships and the things we learned here will serve us well as we join the ranks of those who came before us. And this leads me to another statement that Dean Zadnick is fond of saying, that at Ohio State, we take the, 60 best, the 66 best students in the country and make them into the 66 best optometrists. And after our four years together, I completely agree with that statement. But I would also like to add that we not only take the 66 best students and future optometrists, but we also take the 66 best people you could possibly ever meet. As we look forward to our futures, which I have no doubt are bright, it is great to know, no matter what we do or where we go, we will always have our optometry family. Thank you. Congratulations, Dr. Lappin. Well spoken and well expressed on behalf of your class. I think I've cried four times during this ceremony. I've been keeping track, so we've ever had the over under, it was four. Um, before we finish our ceremony in, in typical Buckeye fashion, I do need to tell you who really were the architects of today. And we had a new advancement today. The people who were working the ceremony, our, our optometry people, were all wearing headsets with little microphones. Um, so they all look like they're headed to ESPN tomorrow for new jobs. Those people are Jen Bennett, Sarah Couples, Sean Gilbert, Justin Greist, Michael Haddock, Carrie McTighe, 
Becca Roby, and Carol Wilcox. Their hard work over many months has led to the lovely event you've attended today. Could you please thank them for me? So there you are, remember what I said, sit up, make sure, look to your left and right, make sure the hoods look good, great. Um, newly minted doctors of optometry, you are poised to provide decades of eye care to millions of grateful patients. And um, I'd like to launch you with a poem written by Christopher Logue. Come to the edge, we might fall. Come to the edge, it's too high. Come to the edge. So they came and he pushed and they flew. So no formal Ohio State event would be complete without a closing song. So if you would please stand, audience, to join the class of 2018 in the singing of the loveliest alma mater I've ever heard, Carmen, Ohio, led by class of 2018 graduate, Dr. Stephen Manning. I'm sorry, I didn't give you enough warning. They're waiting for you. Housekeeping, I would ask that everyone in the audience please stay seated and let these new doctors of optometry leave the auditorium first. You can then meet your person in the foyer or outside. To the Ohio State University College of Optometry class of 2018, you represent the best of the best, the best educated, apparently the best admitted, the best educated, the highest achieving, and the most altruistic. We are so proud of you. You represent dreams fulfilled, promises kept, and futures launched. Congratulations, doctors, and go Bucks. Thank you. 